I'm petty. So there's no, <laughs> there are a few things more satisfying than blocking someone when they're in the middle of like typing a response to you. <laughs> Cause we were out in public so our masks were on the whole time but when we ate, you know, we took our masks off to eat and that's when I saw. <laughs> trying to be mean but like, I don't want to paint this picture of all men in Korea being fuckboys but I do want to paint this picture of not all of them being perfect sweet gentlemen like y'all see in these dramas because that is not the case another reason I didn't want to really talk about this video because I didn't want this to be another story of me bashing a man <laughs> but like they do it to themselves CC Lesson 3, welcome back to my channel. So, for today's video, I had some technical difficulties with like the ring light and stuff, so I haven't been uploading as frequently, so I'm gonna try to make up for that this week and then the upcoming weeks to upload more. But you guys, I got a heart ring light, and look at my eyes. I have hearts in my eyes. So I went on ahead and decided to upload a video that I took three months ago on my birthday, which was in April, by the way. A lot of people were like, oh, happy birthday in the comments, which was very sweet. So I actually was not fully sure if I wanted to upload that video because it ended up not working out with me and that guy. I didn't feel like it was necessary to put out there, but at the same time, it was my birthday and it was a great birthday. Like I, I had a great birthday with my friends and with that guy and I took the time to film it. So I was like, you know what, instead of just deleting this, I might as well edit it and upload it because I can do what I want with my life. So a lot of people have requested the backstory and like the story time behind that encounter. So that's what this video is gonna be about. But before we begin, this video is sponsored by Skillshare. Now, for those who don't know, Skillshare is an online learning community and a lot of people still to this day on Instagram ask me if I'm still studying Korean, how I study Korean. Skillshare is the main thing I've been using lately because my main thing is dialogue and sentence structure. I'm really good with vocabulary, like that's not really a problem for me, but here the way the classes are set up, you can go through each class, you can rewatch the classes that you need to, you can rewind, you can skip, you can take notes, there's homework, there's worksheets. So not only is Skillshare useful for language learning, for me is Korean, but also videography, photography, cooking, writing, creative writing. There's all sorts of options for you to explore in different niches, different categories. And when you take these classes on Skillshare, you can see that you're not by yourself. You can see how many people are in the class with you. I know so many of us have a lot of downtime these days and more downtime trying to stay safe and all that stuff. So it's really cool to be able to fill your time in a productive way, to feel like you're still learning, you're still exploring other interests that you may not have the time to take a formal class and a formal class structure. This is really casual, online, no pressure of like a live interaction or anything like that. So the cool thing is the first 1,000 subscribers to click the link in the description box below get a whole free month free. You get a whole month of the premium trial. You can get all the experience, see how you like it. So you might as well check it out. It's right there. Just be quick about it and start learning with me. Okay, let's go, back to the video. Okay guys, so this is a story time uh, from my birthday a few months ago. So, let's rewind to Monday, April 12th of this year in 2021, where, you know, I went to Korea just YouTubing, like I didn't have any other obligations or anything. I wasn't even supposed to stay that long. I was like, all right, I'm gonna go for like a month or two. I ended up staying for five months in Korea. <laughs> what the <laughs> You know, when you go as a teacher, you're busy all the time. I mostly expected my friends to be too busy to hang out with me on my birthday, it was a Tuesday, so I wasn't worried about that. I was like, you know what, we'll do something this weekend. But at the same time, I didn't want to spend my birthday alone. So I was just kind of like, who can I spend my birthday with? Like, everybody I know works, everyone's busy, everyone has a life, so I'm just the only one without like a life right now. So I hit up Bumble, and um, what I'm used to is people not reading your description like I don't know what it is about dating in Korea but like they do not read your description and I'm already convinced that guys online they just swipe 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 without looking at anything and then maybe later they'll go back and say oh, okay we match but I don't like her we match but she's liberal things like that because uh you know how you can like pay for pay to see who likes you first so then you see in their description they're like oh no foreigners no blacks only Asians and it's like but you swiped on me in my description, I, I mentioned very openly and clearly, no FWB, that's not gonna happen, so don't waste your time, because I don't wanna waste my time either. Um, I'm a foreigner, obviously. Don't ask me where I live, things like that. It's like a few things that I always say and I always request. So usually they'll be like, so where do you live? And I'm like, you didn't read. Or they're like, can we hook up? Again, you didn't read. So this guy, I'm not gonna say names, because I never wanna say names and call out people by name. Like, that that's pointless. Oh, what can I call him? B for bitch, we'll call him B. Okay. Uh, I'm not gonna do that. So yeah, this guy, um, he commented something of like 
responding to something I actually wrote on my bio. I was like, oh my God, he actually read it. And he's like, so how are you? And I was like, oh, I've been better. Like my birthday's actually tomorrow and I am, I have nothing to do. He's like, oh, well we can't have that. You should let me take you out for your birthday. And I'm like, what, for real? So that already was like, oh, like that was really sweet. Like he took the time to actually read my bio and everything. He didn't have like too many pictures of like his face up close or anything. Like it was a mask, it was like distant. I saw he graduated from school in the US. So like he had like his cap and gown and stuff in one picture, group pictures with friends. So, you know, he seemed like a nice normal dude. So we, I was like, oh, sure, that sounds great. And he's like, so is there anything you wanted to do? And I was like, actually, I've always wanted to go to the 63 building in Hongdae or across from Hongdae, was it? Uh, Yaido? And he said, oh yeah, sure, we can do that. I've actually never been there either. And I was like, wow, okay. So he's like, yo, tell me about yourself. So we're talking a little bit casually, like, you know, just so when we meet up in person, it's not entirely awkward. So we pretty much talked the whole day, which I'm not used to. And I was like, you sure you're not busy? Like it's a Tuesday. He said, oh, I'm actually like in between jobs right now. Like I just came back from the States. And I was like, okay, you know, fair enough. It's the morning of my birthday. And my friend Bria, she had to go to work at two, but she was like, hey, we got time for brunch. Like we should go get brunch. What do you want to eat? And I've been such a hoe for Eggs Benedict lately. So she found this place near Apkujong and we got Eggs Benedict and everything. They treated me to brunch, Bria and Tanya, it was really nice. And she works in Jamshil, so I took a taxi with her over to Jamshil, so like walked her to her business, like her job. And then like her front counter people, they're like, happy birthday, and I was like, oh, thank you. Like that was, she's like, it's her birthday, like telling her coworkers and stuff. So that was really nice. Then I started to walk towards Lotte Tower because I knew we were meeting in like, in front of Lotte Tower. I don't remember what the name of that station was. And I remember distinctively, it was a beautiful day. It was a bit chilly, but I don't like hot weather anyway. So I was I was loving it. It was breezy. When the sun was on you, you felt warm enough. So I was, I was loving the weather. And I remember distinctively seeing someone in the distance in like a blue, like a blue plaid blazer. And I was like, oh, he looks kind of cute. I, I hope that's the guy I'm about to go meet. <laughs> Full disclosure, by the way, I don't know if you guys have heard about like mask fishing, but it seems like these days with COVID, because so many people look cute from the eyes up and then when they take it off you like you so um yeah and we met up he's like oh hey and i was like hi and you know everything was really nice and normal so he's like all right so we gotta actually go back down to the train to you know head over to yoido and i'm like yeah yeah so cool let's go so then uh we're talking about everything like we had so much in common we were talking about like Seth Rogen movies and Pineapple Express, uh, This Is The End, Super Bad. We were talking about like Key and Peel, video games, Final Fantasy, Tekken, GTA. Like we had a lot in common. I was like, wow. We even got into anime a little bit, even though he did admit that he wasn't so much of a fan these days, but he, oh, you know, everybody grew up on Naruto and Bleach and stuff, but I actually never really watched Naruto or Bleach or Inuyasha. Like I didn't get too into the mainstreamy ones. I like my hero though. He. <laughs> So yeah, the conversation was flowing. Like I was, we were talking about Zoolander and I was like, wow, like, oh my gosh, like this is crazy. Walking and talking, everything was great. Talking about travel, he did so much traveling and I was so jealous. I was like, I wanna go to Europe so bad too. So the plan was to go to the 63 building and then we were supposed to go to Insadong because I wanted to see this uh, Delight Soul thing, which I ended up going to uh, a few like weeks later with Bria and Tanya. So we got to see it, but with the COVID, uh, like curfew it was we were kind of pressed for time that day anyway so we ended up going to the 63 building it was really nice he paid which was really nice took the tall long elevator ride up if y'all saw it in the vlog <laughs> kind of takes a while to get to the top everything was great like 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 i said my birthday i won't like dog him for that like i had a really nice birthday another reason i didn't want to really talk about this video because i didn't want this to be another story of me bashing a man <laughs> But like they do it to themselves. I was going through all this stuff that I had saved on my like memory card and I was like, you know what? I should go ahead and talk about this because I don't want to paint this picture of all men in Korea being fuckboys, but I do want to paint this picture of not all of them being perfect, sweet gentlemen like y'all see in these dramas because that is not the case at all. I digress. Then he was like, oh, are you hungry? We should get something to eat. So we ended up getting on the bus and we actually did get a little bit lost around Seoul Station. So that kind of took a bit of a detour. And we ended up in Incidon finally. And there was a, a traditional tea place he wanted to take me to, but it was closed down. Like it, the business wasn't a thing anymore, which you'll get used to that. In Korea, a lot of businesses kind of just come and go really fast. Like you just never know. Like, oh my God, this is the best hat store. And then a month later, it's a whole, it's a waffle shop. Like, <laughs> so he's like, oh, this sucks. And I, I was saying how I really wanted to drink some makgeolli. 
everyone goes on about soju, but I love makgeolli. We had hemupajon, which is like a seafood pancake, sort of. It's so good. Um, and we had casual conversation. This is the first time I saw like his face, cause, <laughs> cause we were out in public, so our masks were on the whole time. But when we ate, you know, we took our masks off to eat, and that's when I saw. <laughs> I'm not trying to be mean, but like, <laughs> you know how like when you vibe well with a person that like your physical appearance standards kind of, you know, you know what? He's a really great guy. Like it's fine. We can work ar around that. Like his skin wasn't the best. It was like a bit cratery. He had like a really tiny mouth. He also smoked by the way, which y'all know is like, ugh, I, I don't like smokers. But you know, he was really polite about it. He's like, hey, do you mind if I smoke? And I'm like, yeah, go, go, go smoke. You know, like we, we vibe well. So I was like, you know what? He's not ugly. He's not particularly my type, but he's not ugly. <laughs> That's kind of where my head was. So then we ate and talked and everything. By the time we finished, we realized the Insadong place was closed. He's like, oh, I'm sorry. I'm like, no, no, it's fine. He's like, is there anything else you want to do? I'm like, well, this time of night, you know, everything in Seoul is closing because of COVID. So I don't really know what we can do, but I love Han River. So we ended up going to Han River, you know, it was freezing at this point, but we still sat there and kind of just talked on the bench and tried to ignore the breeze just to spend more time together. And he's like, yo, like, and we started talking about college and fraternities and sororities and stuff. We literally started talking about just anything. And he was, we had really great conversation. So um, I'm getting into the thick of it, why things didn't work out, hang tight. Into the thick of it. I'm like, hey, so, you know, it's late, I should be heading back. He's like, yeah, yeah, cool. And I was like, so my bus stop, cause I prefer, I've said this many times, I prefer the bus over the train. The train is faster, but it's depressing. Everybody's in their phones. It's gray and it's underground. No windows to look out, it's dark. I like to at least look out at the, you know, the building lights, listen to some music. I prefer the bus. So my bus stop and his train stop were in opposite directions. So I was like, all right, you know, I'll text you when I get home. He's like, no, I'll, I'll walk with you to the bus stop. I'm like, you don't have to do that. It's out of the way. He said, no, I insist, it's fine. I was like, okay, cool, thanks. So we're walking down and I realized my bus is coming. So um, I was like, oh, he's like, wait, is that your bus? And I was like, oh crap, it is. So I, I kind of took off. She's a runner, she's a track star. Then he was like, wait, I don't get a hug. And I like looked back and he was like reaching out for a hug. So I ran back to hug him. And then he's like, oh, like text me when you're home. And I'm like, all right, run back to the bus stop. So I texted him when I got back and we were talking like the whole night, the whole next day. And he's like, yo, we should hang out again soon. Like, when are you free? I'm like, I'm a bum, I'm always free. So um, yeah, we made plans to hang out. I can't remember if it was the following Sunday or like two Sundays from now. And then he told me suddenly like, hey, um, if I'm like uh, not responding as fast over these next few days, I apologize. I got this like cool job interview. And in Korea, like when you are trying to work at a company, you need to like study the company. You need to know about when it was founded, what its principles are. And like, you need to study about the company. So I fully understood that. I was like, yeah, yeah, that makes sense to me. But the way his texts were worded, it sounded like it was like a farewell. Like I was, I was confused. He's like, I, I wish we could have had more time together. I wish we could have hung out more. I wish you the best. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your time in Korea. So I was just like, er? <laughs> so I didn't respond. Cause I was like, is that it? Like, I, I didn't know what to make of that. So then I go out and I got my eyebrows microbladed, which I don't know if y'all want to hear about that, but this lady was bomb and she was very English friendly, very nice lady. I did record that process, so if y'all do want to see that, I'll upload it. And I'm just kind of walking around home day because I would like to go for night walks, like that is my thing. And I just decided to hit him up. I was like, how you been? Because we hadn't talked in like five or six days at this point. And he responded pretty fast. He's like, oh, you're, I thought you, you like left me. I was like, what do you mean? He's like, oh, well, you know, you left me on red. I was like, well, you said you'd be busy. And with that last message, it sounded like a farewell. So I didn't really know what to say. He was like, no, I thought you, you left me because you didn't respond. There was poor communication on both our parts. Like, I didn't really know where that, what to make of, I wish we had this more time. I hope you enjoy the rest of your time in Korea. Like, to me, that sounded like I'm too busy to entertain the thought of a female right now. I was kind of saying like, oh, well, you know, I'm used to that. So I kind of just thought it was more the same. Like, it was kind of happening again. So, you know, he got a bit defensive. He's like, I wish you would stop saying like, we're all the same and in the same category. And I was like, I would love for that to be true. But like when the same thing happens to you over and over again, you kind of put two and two together. Like I said, I've been very apparent and very upfront, upfront, 
upfront with you guys about the good dating experiences I've had, like the good exes. Like we only broke up for distance, not because like they were assholes. So I tell y'all the good and the bad. It's just on my part, unfortunately, there's a lot of bad. And I know I have my flaws too. Like I'm not gonna pretend to be perfect. I'm a very impatient person. I tend to assume the worst in guys. Like I hope for the best, but I prepare for the worst. I'm very upfront with when I'm talking to these guys, like, oh, well, cause you know, I'm kind of used to this, this and that. And they're like, oh, well that sucks. I'm sorry that happened to you. They all say the same thing but actions speak louder than words. You can say you're sorry, but you need to prove that you're not like that. Even with my ex, three years ago, I haven't had a boyfriend in three years, y'all. Even the most recent one, uh, there was like miscommunication with us hanging out, going to that uh, Meerkat Cafe, and it was like a huge time thing. He's oh, like, I, I thought you were free this time, and I was like, no, I, I clearly said this. And he's like, oh, well, I can't make it. I was like, you know, that's fine. I'm kind of used to that. Have a good day. I forgot what he said. He's like, I'll prove you wrong or something like He's like, wait, give me a minute. And then me and my friend went to the Meerkat Cafe with just us and I hear, hey Isis, and I'm like, huh? And he showed up and that meant so much to me because actions do truly speak louder than words. He was like, what do you mean like this happens to you all the time? And I was like, well, I meet up with a guy, we appear to hit it off and then I don't really hear from them again. Like, he's a phantom. So I don't really get like bothered by it. I'm just like, okay, like th th that's just culture here. <laughs> that's just life. So he was like, I wish you would stop putting us in the same category. And I'm like, I'm not trying to put you in the same category. I'm just trying to tell you what's happened. And he said, well, how would you feel if I was like bashing women to you? And I was like, I'm not bashing men. I'm just venting a bit. Like, I can't talk about how I feel. And then he said, well, what am I supposed to do? And I was like, empathize? Call me crazy. But you know, there's this thing called empathy and it's really, really nice. It's a really great quality to have. And I'm so sad and I'm so sorry that I do not have these conversations anymore, but I blocked him on Instagram, I blocked him on Kakao, and I removed him. Like he was, <laughs> I'm petty. So there's no, <laughs> there are a few things more satisfying than blocking someone when they're in the middle of like typing a response to you. <laughs> or like if you're on a dating site and then you unmatch them while you see that they're typing, love it, you should try it sometime. So yeah, I, I blocked him while he was typing midway through. Cause he started to get really like arrogant and disrespectful and condescending. He's like, oh, am I supposed to feel sorry that you feel this way? Am I supposed to feel bad for you? Am I supposed to feel sad that this isn't working out? I was like, I don't want you to feel sad. You asked me why I feel a certain way. And then when I'm trying to explain it to you, you're blaming me. Projection much? It's this thing I noticed that when you're honest about your feelings or especially for, for girls, like we're not allowed to vent our frustrations because we're nagging, we're complaining. And, and bitchy, you know, like we can't talk about bad experiences too. This video feels like a, a long ramble, but y'all wanted to know the story and the tea behind it. So there wasn't really much that happened, which is another reason why I didn't think this was really totally worth talking into, but the vlog was nice. Like I said, I had a great birthday. He was a great guy. He treated me very special on my birthday. After that is when we had the fallout, where it was just bad communication. He didn't want to hear my frustrations. He didn't want to hear or try to understand how I felt or where I was coming from. Yeah, he went from being like a really sweet dude to, he was like, oh, you think because you're a pretty YouTuber, I'm supposed to chase you and feel sorry for you? I was like, I'm not asking to be chased. I'm asking for basic communication. Cause you know, even with like dating online culture, one one disagreement, one misunderstanding, unmatching, you never have to talk to them or worry about them again. So I feel like people kind of carry that into real life. And instead of trying to talk something out, it's just like, I don't want to hear it anymore. And I'm guilty of that too, because I blocked them. Like it was going nowhere. It was, I was walking and talking, like I was typing a lot. So it was not productive in any way. It ended on an extremely sour note. Like it's hard to put into words, but he started to make me feel bad for feeling the way that I felt. You know what I mean? Like I should be perfectly content and just accept everything and not be upset about anything. Like it is what it is, just be happy about it. You know what I mean? So I, that's, I blocked him and uh, unfriended him. It just wasn't going nowhere. And it was bare, it was literally about a week of communication anyway. So no love lost, no uh, no hurt feelings. What's done is done, Seregi. And uh, yeah, that was it. So I don't know if this is the, the juicy story y'all were hoping for. Thanks for watching if you did. I hope you enjoyed this story time. <laughs> Remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And I will see you guys next time. Annyeong.